It's good to see you, everyone. Amen. Please bow down your head for a word of prayer. Father, we thank you in the name of Jesus. Speak to our hearts. Speak that we will understand. Speak in languages that we can perceive God and live with. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. The peace of God be with us all. Amen. Amen. <clears throat> we thank God for his banner over us, which is love. Today, I checked it, and you probably have checked. It's 17th of December. So out of the 365 days, we have how many days left? 16 to the end of the year. God has been good, and that is all that pastor has been hammering on, that this is the time for us to be really very grateful. There will be things that we have gone through, but in all of these, God has been good to us as a people, as a family, and as families, all the travelings. And that's why we ought to thank God for his goodness towards us all throughout the year. Every time. And we thank him for his mercies. We thank God for the many marvelous testimonies that we have seen with our eyes in this year. And we are grateful for his divine providence. Somebody say divine providence. Amen. We'll share briefly on the topic, finishing well. Finishing well. Can we repeat that? We're finishing well. Okay. So, I think it's okay. Actually, when you hear finishing well, at this time of the year, to think of the immediate and the now, which is ending this year. So it's perfectly okay. That's what comes into mind when you hear finishing well. And then continuing to believe God that he will take us through and we will end the year. That is all that we've been hammering on for some time now. And indeed he has given us grace. And he has made provision for us. If you have any apprehensions, let me give you his word from Isaiah 40 and 13. For I am the Lord your God. From the NIV, please. Isaiah 40 and 13. For I am the Lord your God who takes hold of your right hand and says to you, do not fear. I will help you. So if you still have some apprehensions, that is the word of God for you. Isaiah 40 and 13. He is the one who holds us by our right hand. And he says to us, do not fear. I will help you. Oh, that somebody will allow it to sink in your spirit that God is our help. And indeed, if God is our help, then we have everything. Amen. Sometimes human beings can play some funny tricks. This is a God who does not play tricks. And indeed, he's a faithful God. And that's why in 2 Thessalonians 3 and 3, he says that, but the word, the, the, the Lord is faithful and he will strengthen you and protect you from the evil one. The Lord is faithful. He's a faithful God. And because he's faithful, he is dependable because of his track record of faithfulness and success. And our God has no record of failure, beloved. There's nothing he has ever said that failed, that has not, that have either happened or is about to happen. And the good news is that he is all potent to be able to see everything through. Amen. So we can trust and depend on him. 
to end the year and to go through all the years ahead of us. Beloved, indeed, if someone is in this place and your knees are weak and wobbling, if you are falling, indeed, if you feel too weak to get to the finish line, here is a message for you from Isaiah 40 and 29. He gives strength to the weary and increases the power of the weak. He is the one who gives strength to the weak and increases the power. When you are weary, he is the one who gives strength and he is the one who gives us power to do everything that we ought to do. Amen. And finally, beloved, let me say that our God of the morning hour Indeed, he is the same God of the third hour. The same God is the God of the sixth hour and the ninth hour and indeed the eleventh hour. And why do I say that? It doesn't matter how many days are left in this year because he's the God of the eleventh hour who is the same, the same yesterday and today. Every prophecy waiting to manifest and everything that belongs to you in the course of 2023, I promise you and we indeed serve a living God that he is He's able to bring to pass. He's able to bring to pass. The same God of the early hour, the third hour, the sixth hour, the ninth hour. He is the same God who is the God of the eleventh hour. He's the same God. He's the same God. He's the same God. So do not wobble in your faith. Do not be afraid. Amen. That's just by the way of introduction. Oh, put your hands together to the glory of God. So I said from the beginning that when you, you hear finishing well, the immediate thing that springs into your mind is ending this year. But actually, let's actually zoom into, I don't have my time. So let's go to 2 Timothy 4 and 7 and 8. If you can do it in the NLT, please. NLT. I have fought the good fight and I have finished the race and I have remained faithful and now the prize awaits me, the crown of righteousness which the Lord, the righteous judge will give me on the day of his return. And the prize is not just for me but for all who eagerly look forward to his appearing. May God bless his word. Amen. So when we talk of finish, finishing well, yes, the immediate is important because at least we need to survive to be thinking of the future, right? So the immediate is important and that's what we went through, that God is faithful and he's dependable and he's everything. And everything that you have spoken concerning your life this year is watching to make it part, come to pass. However, God has not called us into a hundred meter dash, but he's called us into, somebody can complete that for me, into what? A marathon. This race is a marathon. What he's called us into is a marathon. And indeed, until you and I have breathed our last breath, or until Jesus has appeared, the race is on. So whereas we've spoken about the immediate, beloved, we are pivoting and looking at the long term, the eternity, our race, what God has called us into. And the fact that this is a race, 
And that is what we just read that Paul singing that I, I indeed, I indeed have fought the good fight. And I have finished the race. Paul says he has finished the race. How about you and I? He was confident that he had endured to the end and had finished well. Beloved, sadly, let's go to 2 Timothy 4, 4 and 10. Let's go to 2 Timothy 4 and 10. Demas has deserted me because he loves the things of this life and has gone to Thessalonica. That is actually my emphasis. Demas in love with this present world has deserted me and gone to Thessalonica. So we see here two contrasts. We see Paul who really is making bold proclamation that I've fought the fight and I've run the race and all that is, all that is left for me is to receive the crown. And then we see somebody else who indeed was, was the mentee of, of Paul and the Paul saying that he has deserted me. He has deserted me. Why? Because of the love of this present world. Because of the love of this present world. Paul has endured and finished the race and looked forward to the crown of righteousness. The other man deserted his mentor and was never heard from again. We don't know. We don't know whether Demas at some point in time indeed repented. But as far as scripture is concerned, all that we know is that Demas in love with this present world has deserted me. In Philemon, and Philemon 24, and it's only one verse, Philemon 24, Paul, Paul calls Demas a fellow worker along with Mark and Aristarchus and Luke. Demas was apparently a promising young man with a promising future Yet, as far as we know, he did not make it to the end. Why? I'm allowing it to sink a little bit for you. Beloved, this is a sobering thought. Because many of us here are young, committed followers of Christ, Jesus. In his glorious providence, we believe that God has many years ahead for every one of us. And you expect to finish the race, to stand firm and to endure to the end. But there was a time when Demas also thought the same. Demas also thought the same that I will finish this race. But we see that he has deserted. We are talking about finishing well. Somebody said finishing well. He didn't initially join. You thought that when he joined Paul, it was his objective and plan that I will just join and later desert him. No. He undoubtedly expected to also stand fair and finish well. However, we have seen that that was not the case. So that's for those of us here who are young, energetic, on fire. We don't have time, so. But then just cast your, your minds around. In your communities, uh, in our countries, in the whole world, those of us who follow a lot of the people that God have used, some of them did not necessarily have glorious ending. Some of them might have just stumbled and limped to cross the finish line. But we are talking about finishing well. So for those of us who are old in this place, one famous basketball player said that it's ends over until it is what? 
over. So even us, we cannot presume that even at our age, those of us who are older in this place, I think I'm one of the oldest. <laughs> okay, because I don't see my Joe. My Joe didn't come today. So, okay, I'm still looking through. I'm looking through. Uh, I think I'll be the reigning champion for today. <laughs> Who? Oh, grandma, grandma just beat me. That's not nice. <laughs> Hallelujah. So even at our old age, beloved, it is not guaranteed. If we are not paying attention to the things that indeed makes us finish well. We never finish until the day we die. And all of us, young and old, need to heed the warning that comes to us from the example of Demas. All of us. There are a few things I am seeking to end in the next probably 10 minutes. So some of them I will just mention them and then we'll move on. There are a few things that, beloved, that help in this race for us to finish well. It doesn't come automatically. We need to be intentional. We need to be intentional. Once I, I presented a message somewhere and I said that God indeed when he called us, he called us and didn't make us Egyptian mummies and, and just left us just there. No, he called us. He called us for works. Amen. In our bid to finish well, beloved, one of the things that we need to pay attention to is daily time of focused personal communication with God or communion with God. Daily time of focused personal communion with God. The second one is daily appropriation of the gospel. The third is daily commitment to God as a living sacrifice. And the final one is firm belief in the sovereignty and love of God. These, there are many other things, but these are some of the essential things that you and I require to keep in focus, to keep on the radar, to keep at the frontal of, of, of our thinking in all our dealings, if indeed we will finish well. If it's our desire to finish well, and I know that it's the desire of everybody in this place that indeed as Jesus appears, we will all be sitting under his feet. And even if it has not appeared and we have come to the ripe age and we have been called home, indeed, we would have died in the Lord. Amen. There are many sorry stories of people whose end. I remember. Okay, let me go. Let me point out this. These four things that I've mentioned, they are all things from our perspective. So the things that we ought to be doing it. The things that indeed, if we intend to finish war, we need to keep in mind and to be doing them. But then above all of them, I will want to mention the word grace. Somebody say grace. The grace of God. The poor who said, I have fought the good fight. I have finished the race. I have kept the faith. He is also the same person who said in another context that, but by the grace of God, I am what I am. So it's, it's a two-way affair. God does his own by giving us the grace to do the things that we ought to do. But then we have our portion as well. And paying attention unto the things that we probably will mention them briefly. That's 2 Corinthians 5, 15 and 10. 
But by the grace of God, I am what I am. Beloved, Paul attributed all of his endurance, all of his faithfulness to the grace of God. And so as we look at our responsibilities, let's keep in mind that we are enabled to fulfill that responsibility only by the grace of God. Quickly, many of us, on many occasions actually, misunderstand grace. We think that grace is God just allowing us some little room to do our own thing. Right? Oh, because of grace, this one. No. That's a misunderstanding of grace. The Bible makes us understand that the grace of God comes to us through Jesus Christ as a result of his sinless life and sin-bearing death on the cross. But that grace is more than just God's kindness and beloved towards you and I. It is more than God's goodness towards you and I. Indeed, the grace is the ability of God released into us. It's the enablement of God. It's the power of God released into you and I to do the things that we do. I mentioned a daily time of focused communion with God in Psalm 63 and 1, and if you can put it in the ESV. The psalmist says something there. Oh God, you are my God. Endlessly I seek you. My soul thirsts for you. My flesh faints for you. As in a dry and weary land where there's no water. Just grabs the intensity. He said, endlessly. 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 Beloved, endlessly. Yes, sometimes what we do, we read a few scriptures and uh, verses and uh, it is good and by all means continue. That is the foundation. But this year, I am challenging you, even as you look ahead, let it indeed be communion with God. That goes beyond us reading a few chapters in the day. Demas didn't just wake up one day and make a 90 degree turn. That doesn't happen. No, that's not how it happens. He drifted little by little. Little by little towards the attractions of the world. But then beloved, unless you and I are indeed sick and endlessly seeking God and having communion with him, it can happen to any of us. Finishing well. I want to touch all the four points so I will proceed to a daily appropriation of the gospel. A daily appropriation of the gospel. Again, the psalmist says in Psalm 119 and 11, your word I have hidden in my heart that I might not sin against you. And in the same Psalm 119 and 105, it says, Your word is a lamp to my feet and a light to my path. If you and I are going to be able to finish well, continue and finish well, then daily we need to stay in the word. Daily, we need to hear the word of God. Daily, we need to hear the guidance and the counsel of God for our walk with him. Amen. Let me quickly jump on onto the third one. A daily commitment to God as a living sacrifice. I love that one. When I was preparing this one, I stayed on forever. I stayed on forever. You see, when Paul made a mention of that, and actually in Romans 
12 and 1, it says that, I appeal to you, therefore, brothers, by the message of God to present your bodies as a living sacrifice, holy and acceptable to God, which is your spiritual worship. He took us to the Old Testament and to the book of Le Leviticus where we have all the sacrifices. All of them. There are many sacrifices in the book of sacrifices and offerings in the book of Leviticus. Beloved, one which I touch on briefly is the burnt offering. Somebody say burnt offering. There are two characteristics of this burnt offering. Unlike the other sacrifices, the burnt offering, the whole of the offering is burnt. Unlike the other sacrifices that you will give portion to the priest and sometimes even portion to the offerer, the person who brings the offering. The burnt offering, the whole offering is put on the altar and all of it is burnt. And the second characteristic is that the priest ought to be bringing a burnt offering in the morning and then in the evening. Why? So that the, 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 the burnt offering would not go off. So that there is always a burnt offering. These are the two characteristics of burnt offering. Beloved, what it means for us and the application for us is that indeed our entirety, our totality, is what we ought to sacrifice to God. If you and I are indeed are going to be able to finish well, it is not only part of us, it is not only some things, but our totality ought to be consecrated and dedicated to God. And the second application, as, as we, we notice, is that it, the, the burnt offering does not need to go off. It should not go off. It must not go off. So it means that you and I continually ought to be living as a living sacrifice. As living sacrifices. I will touch on this briefly and then we will end it. You and I ought to have a firm, a firm belief in the sovereignty and the, and the love of God. The sovereignty and the love of God. The sovereignty and the love of God. Somebody say sovereignty and the love of God. Lamentations 3, 37 and 38. My soul died. Who can speak? If you can do it in ESV, please. I can't so. Who has spoken and this came to pass unless the Lord has commanded it? Who has spoken? It, is it not from the mouth of the most high that good and bad come from? But the emphasis is on the first one, 37, who has spoken and it's come to pass unless the God had commanded it. Beloved, the God that we worship, the God that we serve, he is in control. This is the belief that you and I have to have. Yes. We don't understand all the things that come our way. One thing that you can, can be assured of is that he's God who, in whom all things work together for our good. This person is not here, so I will quickly mention some of the conversation that he had with me. He's actually, he actually belongs to this church, but he's not here today. Over the week, I posted something and he responded. So why doesn't God just respond? Sarah said, give us the things. And I'm becoming emotional here. Give us the things that we need. And I had a conversation with him. A chat back and forth. Yes. 
It's not everything that we have prayed for that we have received. And in a way, I, 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 gave, I gave him an example that can you imagine that my little daughter of um, 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 five years making requests and then she thinking that she knows what is best for her than me. Beloved, if you and I are going to be able to finish well, then these are some of the essentials. The four things that we have mentioned. Daily time of focus, personal communication with God. Daily appropriation of the gospel. Daily commitment to God as a living sacrifice. And then firm belief in the sovereignty and the love of God. Please be on your feet. I can't soon. If you want to accept the Lord as your personal Savior, please say this prayer with me. Lord Jesus, I come to you just as I am. I repent of all my sins. I ask you to forgive me according to your word. I believe you died. I believe you were buried. I believe you rose on the third day. Now, Jesus, I invite you to come into my heart. Be my Lord and personal Savior. Write my name in the book of life. Help me to serve you all the days of my life. Fill me with your spirit. Any covenant between me and the devil from today is broken. It's destroyed. I'm a new creature. I am born again. Thank you for saving me. In Jesus' name. Amen. Please, if you pray this prayer, please scan the link on the screen or call the numbers below. 0247 080473 0247 080473 or 0241-622-420. 0241-622-420. God bless you.